Welcome to the Air Gun Show, the fortnightly program for air gun shooters. This week I'm reviewing the laminate stock version of the legendary Virac HW77. First though, I'm out with the Daystate Mark IV to deal with some troublesome rabbits. I'm on the grounds of a stately home today where I've been calling on a rabbit control job. You, you can't see it because it's so foggy, but it's a beautiful place. Um, they've got well-kept lawns, tennis courts, woodland and pastures. Now that's a lovely place to live. It's also a lovely place for rabbits to live and, and they're doing very well here. They've got lots of low cover, lots of lush grass, and they've bred very rapidly of late. Hence we've been called in. We've had a quick mooch round being so foggy we haven't seen any rabbits they've probably heard us coming before we've spotted them but we've seen lots of signs um, scrapes holes and droppings now obviously those, those the scrapes are part of the problem they're causing here they're raking up the lawns they're raking up the tennis courts as well as munching through the grassland so they are a serious pest on this holding um, although I'm here on a pest control job there's the plus side of the fact that these are good clean rabbits they'll make good eating so there should be some good uh, free range meat for the pot at the end of the day. I can't wait to get cracking at them. We're all set for the hunt, but before I've even begun, there's an unexpected complication, and it's certainly turning up the heat. The garden's lit a bonfire where they've had to grab up a box hedge that was infected with blight. That's creating a heck of a lot of smoke. It's not conditions that I've had to deal with before and I'm not sure how it's going to affect the hunt. On the one hand, the smoke might discourage the rabbits and put them down, but I'm wondering if it might just help to mask our human scent. We'll soon find out. Fire or no fire, I've got a job to do. Geared up, I set off on an initial stalk round the estate, but it's not going to be a walk in the park. With the fog reducing visibility, even spotting the rabbits is going to take some doing. Eventually, I clock the first coney of the day. It stood just behind the fence you can see coming into view now. It stays put as I stalk in, but with little cover, I don't want to get any closer than absolutely necessary. So a nice, steady shot from the prone is in order. The backdrop is safe, but the fence rails are obscuring the rabbit's head. A well-timed squeak gets it to sit upright, giving me a good view of the kill zone. One flip and it's lights out. The Mark IV has done its job. That's one bunny down. Let's hope there are more to come. Soaking wet from where it's flipped in the dew, but uh, it's not a big one. But it's it's still going to grow up into a, into a grass gobbler. It's a good pan-sized rabbit, though. And although some people are a bit picky about eating smaller rabbits, they're actually the best ones for the pot. It's not overwintered. It's very young. Its meat's going to be really tender. It's a good one. Oh, well, it's a cracking headshot. Really clean dispatch. Looks like we might get some more now as well. The mist seems to be clearing. It's warming up a little bit, so. Fingers crossed the sun will burn through soon and we'll uh, get some more rabbits coming out. Just a few yards further on I spot another pest. It's right on the edge of shootable range and the shot's obscured. This time there's a bit more cover to move through and another fence in the way. So stalking closer in is the sensible option.
The rabbits have been nibbling at the shrubs as well as the grass. It's certainly clear that some pest control is required, and I'm happy to provide it. This stalk goes by the book. I'm soon in position and ready to take my second shot of the day. But the pellet clips a nettle stem and strays wide of the mark, sending the rabbit bolting for cover. Before I can curse the missed shot, I spot another one just down the fence line. Rabbits can cause serious damage on an estate like this, and every one counts, so I'm determined not to waste this opportunity. That's two down, and the fog is still lifting. Things are looking up after all. Well, that's a bigger one. We're walking up the ride, a couple of rabbits out on the bank and uh, managed to get into a steady position and bag one. Nick's not sure if he got the kill shot, but it was a good clean smack to the head, so we've got the ball rolling now. And with the rabbits picked up, it's time for a quick diversion before we continue. Okay, we've shot two rabbits. Uh, they're getting to be a bit of a handful as, as we're stalking around. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hock them we found a discreet place out of the way of where any walkers could be going by or where any foxes might happen across them. Hopefully they won't. Um, so what I'm going to do to hock this rabbit is make a cut between the, you can feel there's a, a broad tendon that runs parallel to the bone above the foot. I'm just going to make a cut straight through there to make a gap between the bone and the tendon. What I then do is place the legs either side of the branch. The leg with the cut is at the front, so I'm pulling the back leg through, trying not to let the toes catch. Through it goes, and that effectively makes a handle of the rabbit's legs. It'll hang there, and I don't have to carry it around. So that keeps me hands free. I can shoot, reload, and I'm not burdened with rabbits. With that taken care of, I can get back to the best bit, the shooting. Visibility is getting better, and I feel a change of tactics is in order. Rather than trying to stalk into the rabbits, I'll lie out in ambush and let the conies come to me. With a wide field of view and an array of top kit in my arsenal, you'd think things should go my way. But nothing's ever guaranteed in hunting. For a long time, nothing shows itself. As is often the case, patience is what I need. The vigil pays off as I finally get a rabbit in my sights. A solid strike to the head and it's another good kill. Just seconds later, it happens all over again. A rabbit ventures onto my side of the bank and ends up paying the price. Well, we've had a couple more in pretty quick succession there. I came into this field, spooked a couple of rabbits into the hedgerow. Um, there's a bank there and there's clearly some burrows. So I thought it was worth setting up here. Also a really nice safe spot because it's a good high backstop. The bank runs along behind, so I knew the shots would be safe. Grabbed a branch from the wood pile just to give myself a little bit of cover because it's quite an open position here. And uh, sure enough, the rabbits came. First thing to come out was a squirrel. We were distract distracted. Nick spotted a squirrel coming along the fence and we were both, both watching that. And uh, unfortunately the squirrel wouldn't stop. But look back and a rabbit had come out. And that was the first one. So we dropped the rabbit, 
The squirrel came back out and was chattering, going mad, distracted by the squirrel. I thought we'd get another chance at it, but it wasn't safe. The squirrel was up high in the trees. I didn't know what was behind it, so we had to let the squirrel go. But at least we've bagged a couple more rabbits. Well, considering the slow start, that's gone really well. We've wrapped up with four rabbits. Hardly saw any when we first arrived. It was very quiet, which was a surprise because I thought we'd catch a few that were still lingering out from feeding through the night. I think the weather's played a big part. It was very cold, it's still very gray. There's a real nip in the air, which is not ideal for daytime rabbiting. We picked off a couple just lurking around earlier on. It warmed up a little bit and we nailed two then. There's a bit of a flurry of activity. The sun threatened to come out and never did. Things tailed off again. So we hold up, the ambush definitely made a difference. Stopping off at that final warren and picking off that last two, it was definitely worth waiting it out for them. I think there are a lot more rabbits here than we've seen today. And I think on a warm sunny evening, we'd probably nail a lot more. So hopefully we'll get better weather next time. Well, those rabbits weren't giving themselves up, but at least the Mark IV brought a few of them to book. Now, it's over to the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. The Airgun Centre has put together a generous Daystate Huntsman Regal package to mark its 35th anniversary. The anniversary combo includes Daystate's acclaimed PCP with test certificate, lifetime guarantee and Mark VI reflex silencer, a Hawk Eclipse scope and mounts, a Daystate hard case, Deban super sling and swivels plus a pack of targets, all for less than a grand. Pete Zamet of the Essex-based business said the deal was a big thank you to its loyal customers. More information at theairguncentre.com Basque has teamed up with Birmingham gunmaker BSA to enhance its rapidly expanding airgun programme. The new partnerships will see BSA supplying its award-winning Ultra and Meteor airguns for Basque to use at all its airgun coaching and young shots events. BSA said they were incredibly excited to be getting involved in the future of airgun shooting. Excitement is growing over what's been described as the world's best airgun moderator. AirArms' new QTEC suppressor is 7.5 decibels quieter than the current market leader, it's claimed. The mods are calibre-specific for optimum noise reduction and coated in a hard-wearing, low-reflection black finish. Originally developed for the AirArms Ultimate Sporter, the QTEC is now available with half-inch male and female UNF threads to fit a wide range of barrels. The lightest model weighs just 183 grams. We might be building up to the CLA Game Fair 2014, but the location of the 2015 fair has just been announced. Harwood House in Leeds will host the fair next year. It's the first time the fair has headed up north since 2003. The planned game fair at Harwood in 2007 was cancelled owing to extreme weather conditions. Helen Woolley, the CLA's Director General, said she was delighted that the game fair was coming to Harwood for a sixth time. And finally, is the BBC's coverage doing enough to support egg and shooters? A new BBC report says the corporation is failing to represent rural dwellers adequately. It found there was room for improvement in how the countryside issues are covered and urged the BBC to appoint a senior editor with responsibility for rural affairs. Shooting organisations have told the BBC it needs to see further than its London news desks and stop polarising complex issues into simple for and against arguments. That was the Airgun Show News. The gun I've been testing this week is a real classic, Virac HW77K in limited edition laminate stock guys. This gun absolutely dominated field target in the 1980s. 
thanks to its fixed barrel accuracy and awesome trigger unit. I absolutely longed for one as a kid, but unfortunately never got my hands on one. Um, since then, this gun's undergone all sorts of tweaks, basically just to maintain its reputation as one of the best spring-powered air guns on the market. Focusing on the stock, it's an ambidextrous model, and as ambi stocks go, it is a good one. Uh, there's a generous cutaway on both sides for your thumb muscle, which you don't often get on ambidextrous stocks, and that definitely helps in terms of handling. Quite a pronounced pistol grip, makes for less of a reach to the trigger than on earlier models, and that's another welcome change. Pistol grip and forend, both got plenty of checkering. Again, that improves grip. And the cheek piece, nice and high, certainly high enough for use with a telescopic sight, although the gun does come fitted with open sights. The multicoloured laminate stock is one of the key features of this rifle, and apart from looking quite good, it also has functional purpose. The several muted colours you get here are bound to help in terms of breakup and concealment for hunters. It's low glare also, which is going to be less eye-catching to quarry, and I just think this finish looks a little bit classier than a conventional camo dip because you maintain the, the grain and the texture of the wood. This is the Autumn Forest version, which is more of a reddish brown finish overall. There's also a Summer Forest version, which has more greens and is generally a bit lighter. The metalwork is absolutely impeccable. Uh, the engineering is everything that you'd expect from German Supremo Virac. Um, the deep blue finish looks absolutely great, works well with the stock, and I think a shake test is always a good litmus test with a spring-powered air gun. And if you pick this one up, give it a good shake, there's absolutely no rattle from the cocking linkage or any other components for that matter. The cocking cycle begins with the release button to free the under lever. Draw the under lever down to cock the spring. Effort's more than moderate, but you'd expect that this is a full powered air gun, but it's very smooth, silky smooth in fact. There's no hint of any grinding or graunching. And once it reaches that full point, it clicks home with a nice positive click. Apart from cocking the spring, the downstroke of the under lever also pulls back this sleeve to expose the loading area, which is direct to barrel. Now, it's a bit of a knack, but I've got big hands and I've not struggled loading fiddly 177 pellets into the test gun. There is an anti-bear trap mechanism to keep fingers safe and the safety catch engages automatically when the gun's cocked. Frustratingly, you can't push the safety back to re-engage it once you've set it to fire, although you can reset it by re-cocking the under lever and it will click back. If you should happen to drop a pellet into the loading area, they usually roll out quite easily if you just roll the gun over, so it's not too much of a disaster. Once you have seated a pellet, it's just a matter of returning the under lever, clicking it back into place, and the gun's ready to fire. The HW77 is fitted with Virac's very well-known record trigger unit. Experienced air gun shooters will need no introduction to this unit. It's set the standard for decades. Um, it's two-stage. It's adjustable, but straight from the factory, I found it crisp and predictable and didn't need to mess about with it. I fitted the HW77 with a scope, just really so I can see what it's capable of accuracy-wise. Um, I certainly couldn't exploit its full accuracy potential with open sights. Um, fitting tellies entailed me removing the, the rear element of the open sights because that sat at the front of the dovetails and would have fouled the objective lens of the scope but it was a straightforward job, only required a flat-headed screwdriver. You can also remove the foresight with a, with a hex key, um, but to be honest with you, it's not compromising the scope picture, so I've left it on there. Incidentally, there are also holes for recoil arrestor pins towards the back of the rails if you're worried about scope creep. So, it's brilliantly engineered and sat in a stock that makes for an excellent shooting platform, so how does it cut it in the accuracy stakes? Truthfully, very well. It takes skill and practice to shoot accurately with a spring-powered air gun because of the recoil, but this gun is definitely capable of one-hole groups out to 30 metres and probably beyond in the right hands. Right, well, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Um, I'm an average shot at best when it comes to shooting springers, but 
four have gone through the same hole practically there. That's about a 10 millimeter group. I pulled one off, that was me, not the gun. Um, but certainly from what is a relatively unfamiliar spring powered air gun, to be able to rustle up a group like that in a slight breeze, I think that's very impressive accuracy. What recoil there is, is actually very smooth and that's because of the, the great engineering of this gun. There's very little twang, in fact, there's no discernible vibration. What kick there is comes straight back into the shoulder, which certainly makes for easier shooting. It's a very consistent gun and actually makes printing tight groups surprisingly easy considering it's a Springer. I'm only an average shot with a spring-powered air gun, but I've still managed to rustle up some pretty respectable groups. I actually think some of the 77's accuracy can be attributed to its weight. Um, it weighs in at 4.2 kilos unscoped, so by the time you've fitted tellies, it's quite a heavy gun. But that heft helps to absorb the recoil and keep the gun locked on target. This is certainly an air rifle that stays where you point it. Um, the K stands for carbine. It measures in at 1,020 millimetres, so just, just over a metre. It's not exactly stubby, but it's still compact enough to handle well in most hunting scenarios. If you like to use open sights, the gun does come fitted with a set. Um, very well made. They're adjustable for windage and elevation as you'd expect. And the rear sight actually has a rotating leaf which incorporates four different notches so you can set the sight to exactly how you like it. Well, whatever you make of the special edition laminate stock, this gun is a great performer. I think the only criticism that anybody could really level at it is its weight, and as I've explained, that's an advantage in the sense that it does actually help to manage some of that recoil. UK distributors whole cartridge tell me this gun has a suggested retail price of £427. When you consider that that buys you a top quality fixed barrel spring powered air rifle, which has certainly stood the test of time, I think that represents excellent value for money. That's it for this week, but we'll be back in a fortnight with more hunting, news and reviews. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.